5 on 7 5. Nice. And it says we're supposed to find the sine of alpha plus beta, cosine of alpha plus beta, sine of alpha minus beta, and cosine of alpha minus beta. And it says the sine is 3 fifths. So first of all, we've got to figure out what the cosine is. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So that's 9 25ths from 25 25ths. Cosine squared alpha is um, 16 25ths. So Cosine of alpha has to be the square root of that, which is plus or minus four fifths. But since we're in the first quadrant, we would use the plus one. Okay, so now we can go ahead. Oh, and we need beta too. So if the cosine's this, if I square that, that's four times five over 25. Four times five is 20 over 25 and that's what cosine squared is plus sine of beta squared equals 1 so that would 25 20 20 fifths from 1 is 5 20 fifths so sine of beta would be the square root of 5 over uh, 5 because that would be 20 from 25 is 5 25 square root would be this uh, and it would be plus or minus but since I'm in the fourth quadrant the sine would be negative so that's what the sine of beta is and so now I can do these sine of alpha plus beta is sine of alpha times the cosine of beta and sine, you keep the same sine, plus then if it was sine alpha cosine beta, then it's cosine alpha, which is four-fifths times the sine of beta, which is negative square root of five over five. So we get six square roots of five over 25 plus actually minus because that negative minus four square roots of five over 25 so that leaves us two square roots of five over 25 for this one for sine of alpha minus beta the plus becomes minus and the minus would change that minus to a plus, so I'm going to get, for this one, I'm going to get 10 square roots of 5 over 25, which reduces to 2, 2 square root of 5 over 5. Now for the cosine, the cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. So I'm going to have, uh, where was cosine? Four-fifths. times the sine, uh, cosine of beta, two square roots of five over five. And if it's plus, we subtract, and then it's um, sine, sine. So it's three-fifths times negative square root of five over five. So both have a denominator 25, so I'm gonna get 25. And the numerator, I'm going to get 8 square roots of 5 plus, because of the minus minus, plus 3 square roots of 5, so 11 square roots of 5. That would be the answer for uh, that one. And then for the minus, the sine, oh wait, yeah, for the plus, it's minus because the cosine changes. And for the minus, it's plus, so I'm going to get 8 minus 3, which is 5 square roots of 5 over 25 for that one. That's what they wanted us to do on 35. And 40 is pretty much the same thing. They just have them in different quadrants and different values. 40, they said the cosine of alpha 
is one half, and that's in the fourth quadrant, minus pi over two is less than alpha, which is less than zero. And they said that the sine of beta is one third, and we're gonna be in the first quadrant. So the cosine of beta is gonna be uh, positive, but if I do sine squared, which would be one ninth plus cosine squared beta equals one, one ninth from nine ninths is eight ninths. So cosine is gonna be square root of eight over three plus or minus, but we want in the first quadrant, so it's gonna be plus. That can also be written as two squared, so two over three. And then the cosine of alpha is one half, so the sine is square root of three over two, but in the fourth quadrant, it'd be minus. That's a special angle, so that's the sine of alpha is square root of three over two, but negative since we're in the fourth quadrant. So the sine of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta of three. Uh, and if we're doing plus on the sine, it stays the same. And then it's sine of alpha, cosine beta, cosine alpha, which was one half, sine of beta, which was one third. So that one equals uh, negative two square roots of six plus one over six. That's the sine of alpha plus beta. Then sine of alpha minus beta would change the sine in here. And so I'd have minus two square roots of six minus one. over two times three, six. Now the cosine would be of alpha plus beta. It's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So the cosine is one half of alpha and cosine of beta is two square roots of two over three. And when the cosine is plus, we do subtract then we do sine sine, and so the sine would be negative square root of three over two times sine is one third. So we get two square roots of two plus the square root of three over six. And for the cosine of alpha minus beta, we would do plus here, and so that would change the sign on this square root of three. So it would be two square roots of two minus the square root of three over six. So that's 45. The next problem that was asked for is 55, a uh, 45. 45 says, Use the figures, and so they have some figures in the book, and figure out what g of alpha minus beta is. And g is the cosine function. So we want the cosine of alpha minus beta. They're just trying to confuse you with the writing. And they said, use the figures. And the, the first figure shows a circle. And alpha ends up at x1. And 
it's x squared plus y squared equals 4. So the radius is 2. That's what this is telling us. The circle's radius is 2. And so if we got 1 squared plus what squared is 4? And that would be th uh, square root of 3. So, so I'm putting in for y 1. And I'm put, leaving x. And that squared plus 1 equals 4. So I take 1 from 4 is 3. Take the square root. So x is the square root of 3 on that point and the radius is 2 so the x is the square root of 3 the y is 1 and the radius is 2 okay now let's do the other one which was a circle where we were talking about an angle that went clear down here here and it's 1 third and y and and they said the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals one so one third squared one ninth plus y squared equals one one ninth from one is eight ninths so y is the square root of 8 is 2, square roots of 2, over the square root of 9 is 3, and if we're down here, the sign is negative, not the positive when I take the square root. Okay, so now to do the cosine of alpha minus beta, that's cosine alpha, cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So cosine of alpha, that since this is radius is not there, uh, is 2, we have to divide everything by 2, so that's going to be square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of beta is 1 third because this is a unit circle, radius 1, so times 1 third plus sine of alpha is 1 half. We shrink this all by 2 to make it 1 half square root of 3 over 2 and 1. So 1 half sine of beta is negative 2 square roots of 2 over 3, which is square root of 3 minus 2 square roots of 2 over 6. That's 45. And then the next one was 55. So 55 says, uh, show that the tangent of pi minus theta is negative tangent theta. Well, the tangent of two angles Gus. So tangent is tangent of the first angle. Uh, and the numerator of tangent is sine, so it's the same sine minus tangent theta over 1 minus these two multiplied, or plus. That's the tangent of two angles subtracted. You can look, at, look up the formula. So the tangent of pi is tangent at pi is zero because that would hit right there on the tangent line. If you went at pi, it comes back to zero. So we got zero minus tangent theta over one plus zero times the tangent of theta, and that would be zero. So we got minus tangent theta over one, which is minus tangent theta. So that's 55. Then 65. It says show, where is it here? Sine of alpha plus beta 
over sine of alpha minus beta is equal to tangent alpha plus tangent beta over tangent alpha minus tangent beta. Well, if I work this out, this is going to be sine of alpha cos uh, cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. That's the formula for this. Over, for the subtract, it's the same thing except for the plus becomes minus. Well, I don't see any tangents, but tangents are have cosines in the denominator. So I'm going to divide the numerator by cosine alpha cosine beta cosine alpha cosine beta. I'm going to distribute to both of those and same down here. Cosine alpha cosine beta cosine alpha cosine beta and the sine alpha over cosine alpha is tangent alpha. Cosine beta over cosine beta is 1. Cosine alpha over cosine alpha is 1. But sine beta over cosine beta is tangent beta. Cosine beta over cosine beta is 1. So sine alpha over cosine alpha is tangent alpha minus Cosine alpha over cosine alpha is 1, and sine beta over cosine beta is tangent beta. All right. Uh, 70. 70 says show secant alpha minus beta is... Secant alpha, secant beta over 1 plus tangent alpha, tangent beta. Well, secant is 1 over the cosine of alpha minus beta. And we have a formula for cosine of alpha minus beta. That'd be 1 over cosine alpha, cosine beta. And when it's minus on the cosine, it's plus over here. Sine of alpha, sine beta. And we want tangents again. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by 1 over cosine alpha, cosine beta and the denominator by 1 over cosine alpha, cosine beta, like I did up above, but I didn't actually write this step in. So I get 1 over these, which is just going to be secant alpha, secant beta in the numerator. Over, and cosine alpha, cosine beta, times 1 over that is going to be 1 plus sine alpha over cosine alpha is tangent alpha and sine beta over cosine beta is going to be tangent beta. That's 70. So now we've got uh, 83. Let's see if we can get this one in on here. 83 says What's the tangent of the sine inverse of three fifths plus pi over six? Now, this is the tangent of two angles added. The formula for that is the tangent of the first.
plus the tangent of the second over 1 minus the tangent of the first times the tangent of the second. So, so now we get, um, we got to figure out what this is. So this says there's an angle whose sine is three-fifths. Sine is three-fifths. So the cosine is four-fifths and the hypotenuse is one. So the tangent is going to be three-fifths over four-fifths. And the sine is positive. And if we're doing the sine inverse, it's in these two quadrants. We're going to get a positive cosine. So the cosine is positive four-fifths. The sine is three-fifths. And so the tangent of this angle is three-fourths. Now the tangent of pi over six, that's right down here where this is one half and the square root of three over two. So the tangents, one over the square root of three over one minus three fourths times one over the square root of three. And we could do some rationalizing, but that's close enough on that one. That's 83. So let's do 84, no, 80, 90. Last one on this assignment. Okay. I need to do something here. So 90 says uh, cosine of tangent inverse of u plus tangent inverse of v. So the rule for cosine sum of angles is cosine of the first cosine of the second Minus, when it's plus, it's minus and cosine. Sine of the first uh, sine of the second. Okay, so now I got to draw a picture where the tangent, an angle where the tangent is u. Tangent is opposite. over adjacent, so 1 squared plus u squared square root, that's 1 plus u squared square root. Here is the angle, and the cosine will be 1 over the, this. Now i got to draw one where it's v. Well, if that was v, it would be 1 over the square root of 1 plus v squared. Minus, now the sine of this one would be opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be u over square root of 1 plus u squared. And sine of v, if v was here instead of u, then it'd be v over 1 plus v squared under the square root. And that would be good enough for me.